Hi everyone, this video is about dynamic shadows in 3.js. We will take a look at different light types and how to enable shadow casting. So let's check it out. So here I am in the documentation section of 3.js and if you search for light in the search bar, you see different references for light and you see different light types. You can check out the other lights like ambient light and it says it cannot cast shadows or directional light and it says it can cast shadows. So this post here pretty much describes what kind of lights we can use for dynamic shadow casting. We want to have direct lighting, they, will, they can cast dynamic shadows and it's uh, possible with these lights here, spotlight, directional light, point light and yeah, apparently rect area light has not implemented shadows yet. Alright, so I have prepared a small demo scene here. I basically did all the boilerplate coding. And you see I have a scene here, I have a camera, perspective camera, a renderer, orbital controls, the window resize handling so I can resize the window properly. And um, I placed the camera so I can view all the 3D objects. I added an ambient light. The ambient light illuminates uh, all 3D objects but uh, it cannot cast shadows. Set the, uh, the scene background color to white. And here I have added several 3D objects. This is the plane geometry, which is the floor down here. The cone is this one here, the cylinder and the torus. And you see they all have fong material so they can receive light. And I also added a directional light. We will take a look at it uh, later. And also the animation loop. And um, yeah, added the renderer dome element and started the animation function. If you want to have shadows, you must enable shadow casting. So let's just do that. Let's go to the renderer and let's say renderer shadow map and say enable is true because the default value is false. Then let's go to the directional light and down here you can say cast shadows also true because the default value is also false. And then you must enable shadow casting and shadow receiving on all the 3D objects. Let's go to the floor or to the plane and let's say plane receive shadow is true. And on the cone you can say receive shadow true and also cast shadow true. And then it says the cone can receive shadows from other 3D objects and can cast shadows, as you can see here. And let's do this on the other objects as well. So cylinder, receive shadow, true, and cast shadow. And the torus as well. And here I must set it to true. And it is important to know how the directional light is casting shadows. It is using an orthographic camera to cast shadows. It is orthographic because all the light rays are parallel and that means all the shadows of all the objects go into the same direction. And we can add a helper for that uh, shadow camera. Let's say scene add and it is a new three camera helper. And we must access the camera of the directional light. Camera shadow. With that we access the directional light shadow object. And we want to have the camera. And now you see the camera. This is useful for debugging. You see the, the position of the light. And the light is looking at the origin of the scene. This is the default value. And you see the size of the camera. And the thing about the camera is all objects which are within the camera, they cast shadows. And all objects which, which are outside of the camera, they do not cast shadows. That's an important thing to note. And you can tweak the camera if you want. You can change uh, the size of the camera. So let's go and let's say 
camera and um, top and top is plus equals 25 from the center of the camera bottom minus 25 and you can say left and right plus 25 so as you can see it increases the camera size and that you can with that you can cover more 3d objects and maybe you see the downside of it is uh, the shadow quality is uh, now lower you can also tweak that you can say directional light shadow map size and then you can say width and this must be a value with power of 2 so the, the default values are here 512 and 512 and uh, you can say it is 4096 and the height as well And yeah, you see it increases the shadow quality. Of course, it takes more resources, etc, etc. But uh, now you know how to do that. And now let's build a small gimmick in here. I want the directional light to circle around the 3D objects. For that, I can go into the animate function. And I introduce a new variable. Call it time. And it is date now times um, some small value like this and I can say the directional light position and x is equals um, now I can do some math with math sign and it is time times some value like this and multiply it by 20 and also the z position and this time it is a cosine and with that I will uh, make the directional light circle around the origin and uh, let me save that and uh, there you go and let me make it a little bit quicker let me remove this so now you have that uh, cool little gimmick Alright, so I have removed the directional light and I have placed a spotlight instead. So let me zoom out and uh, you see how it looks like. So you have uh, the origin of the light and it's uh, uh, shining in a cone shape into one direction. And um, yeah, you also have to enable shadow casting here. And you say sh cast shadow equals true. And that's how it looks like. And you can also tweak the spotlight as you need. Let's uh, take a look at the constructor and you can, you know, say tell the intensity, the distance, the angle, etc. And you can also increase the shadow quality. Let's take a look at the documentation here. And you can also set uh, the shadow map size. Let's copy paste that and uh, take a look at this. So yeah, it looks a little bit better now. So yeah, there you go. And it's also notable that the shadows of the objects, they are spreading into different directions. And I have also implemented the animation gimmick to the spotlight. So it looks kind of cool. And the last thing I'm showing is the point light. So the point light is one point which emits light and shadows in all directions. You see, you can also tweak that point light. You can set the color, for example, the intensity, the distance, or, and the decay. And also don't forget to enable shadow casting with that flag. You can also tweak the shadow quality with the map size. And also you, I have added the point light helper. This is the red object here to visualize and to debug the point light. Let me comment that out. And um, now it's gone. And yeah, I've also added an animation gimmick to move the point light around. 
And of course you can cast shadows with several lights. So here I've added two point lights with uh, different colors and they are moving around those 3D objects. So I guess that's it. Thank you for watching the video and have a nice day.